I'm happy with the uh, progress that I've made on the watch this week. As you can see, almost all the recesses are complete. Thanks to Bill Leiter who commented, head down and spindle on. Um, that really stuck in my brain this week and has been the mantra that I've been using and just really working hard to get to where I am right now. I know that there's some people who are following my progress and they don't know all the details of the processes that I'm using. So I thought I'd start this video by giving an explanation into the processes of how I got to where I am right now as I'm almost completely finished machining on the watchmaker's lathe and the rest is going to be done with hand tools. So all the machining done on this brass disc is actually going to turn into the bridges of my watch. This is my brass disc. As you can see, it's very similar to the back of the barrel bridge. I just need to finalize the space for the click and click spring and also the groove and the cylindrical recess in the back of the plate. So really this whole brass disc is going to be the barrel bridge, which is this section in here and the train bridge, which is this section in here, and also it's going to include the balance cock. And to get to this stage, I've broken it down into seven easy to follow steps. Step one, shellac the brass disc to the main plate. Step two, center and drill the alignment pin holes in the brass disc. Remove the main plate and tap these holes. Step three, make threaded alignment pins and screws. Only insert half of the alignment pins. Step four, attach the main plate back onto the brass disc and secure with the screws that you've just made into the remaining alignment pin holes. Step five, center a required hole. Remove the main plate, center drill, Drill a hole to allow clearance for a lathe cutter, then bore the hole to about 0.1 millimeters under the required diameter. Step six, scribe the recess and machine to the correct diameter and depth. Step seven, repeat steps four through to six until all the holes and recesses are complete. Before making a recess, you would have seen me scribing the diameter, the required diameter with this tool. If you don't know what this tool is, it's called a depthing tool. I like to use this tool because it has a brass cone, which allows it to easily fit into different hole diameters. And these runners are adjustable in depth so obviously there's a bigger hole it's going to sink further in so you need to pull the scribing run runner further back it's very easy to use i measure out the radius with a vernier caliper first and then i put it straight onto the workpiece so these tools are actually designed to allow the watchmaker to correctly depth the wheel to the pinion and you'll be able to see and feel if the teeth are making contact at the right position and then you can scribe that distance on a watch plate. However, there's conflicting information out there as to whether the depthing tool is accurate enough to actually do that. In the book titled Practical Benchwork for Horologists, this book was actually written by Lewis and Samuel Levin, who are actually their, their father and son um, behind the whole Levin Lathe brand. So you might be familiar with them if you've ever heard of Levin Tools or Levin Lathes. So they actually made some very high quality watch and jewelry making tools and machinery. Basically what these guys said in the book is that you can't achieve the accuracy required with such a simple tool I mean, they said even if the runners are aligned perfectly, when you go to scribe um, the distance on your workpiece, if you are out by any smidgen of an angle, it's going to throw out that distance. So when you're talking in microns or hundredths of a millimeter, sort of any angle, either side of zero will make a difference in the distance. So I think that's what they're getting at. George Daniels, however, sort of describes that you can use a depthing tool um, to build his pocket watch. So there are two sort of main types of uh, depthing tools. This one here has a plate 
which is tied down from the top so you can completely remove this and George Daniels talks about sort of milling V groove so the runners sit perfectly in line with each other however there is this sort of fixed type so it's just a hole there is no adjustment so if it's out by any small margin well then you're sort of stuck with it um, this one is actually pretty good I'm going to try I think I'm going to use this one for a future project which is in the pipeline which, which will hopefully start to come to fruition next year and just want to get back to this book it's actually an excellent excellent read I think there's information in here which you know you will never find in any other book so just as an example they have sort of dimension drawings on how to build a uh, filing machine attachment that will fit into the watchmaker's lathe and also they provide dimension plans on how to build this uh, screw cutting attachment for the watchmaker's lathe so that's the end of this episode thank you so much again for taking your time to watch this video i hope you enjoyed it i hope you learned something and as always thanks for watching if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up if you want to see any of my upcoming videos hit that subscribe button and if you have any questions or something you want to say feel free to leave it in the comment section below